Hi, thanks for coming in. Great landing, Jackson. What we're here to talk about today is getting metal, buying it, scoring it, just coming up with it. And one of the things you need to be able to describe is what exactly you're looking for. Conversation. We're going to cover steel, the many types of it, and also the shapes and forms it's available in. All right, the most common type of uh, steel that you see out there is uh, definitely hot roll. It's uh, and the alloy is 1010. Uh, some of the the uh, people who sell the material will also describe it by the ASE designation, which is A something something, uh, A five. 500 don't uh, don't need, don't use those exact ones and never mind that part um, the uh, the um, uh, It comes in several forms uh, one of them that you're probably most familiar with is pipe I have a piece of it right here, and this comes in a variety of different sizes some people use it for Structural applications it wells great and you can buy pipe bending dies for it for making handrails and things like that I prefer to use square tube or DOM steel tubing. It's a lot stronger. The next thing up the up the list is uh, 1018 and 1020 alloy, which is also made into several different products that uh, go into making you know your end result. And uh, the a couple of examples here would be cold roll bar. This starts out being hot rolled like this, but again it's a different alloy and uh, it's, it has slightly more carbon and it'll be 1018 or 1020 alloy steel. And this stuff is, uh, is rolled through nice clean rollers as you can see. It's uh, available in fractional sizes and some metric sizes, I have some laying around here, uh, from again from your local suppliers. But um, here's another shape, this is, I don't know, five inch or six inch wide uh, by quarter. It's got a little bit of a, a bow, probably 10 or 15 thousandths, maybe, you know, maybe 10, maybe 10, 15 thousandths. And, uh, but otherwise it's, it's pretty nice. You might get a, a, you know, a bend over a long length, but it's usually pretty straight. I'll use this stuff for tooling, fixtures, for parts that uh, people are gonna be looking at, coming in contact with, stuff that I'm, I'm gonna TIG weld and I want it to look good. One of the great things about it that I love using, uh, using it for is stuff that you might ordinarily use hot roll, but because it's already clean, you don't have to grind it and you get great welds on it. It also drills and taps a little better than hot roll, I think. Uh, one of the benefits of hot roll 1010 that I didn't mention is that when you machine it, it is more likely to be dimensionally stable after it's been machined. Cold roll bar has some residual stress built in that when machining sometimes causes it to warp or bend. So there's another type of steel that you can get that I like to use for my flame cut and laser cut projects, like on my Jeep, for example, is a material called HRPO, which stands for hot rolled pickled in oil. And what that means is that when it comes out of the furnace and it goes into the cooling area prior to that cooling process, during the manufacturing process, while it's still hot, it's run through an oil bath that prevents the big heavy layer of scale from forming on the outside of the material. When you touch it, you don't get quite as dirty and it also doesn't make, it your make a mess of your shop. And one of the great things about it is that you don't have to grind it to get it ready to weld. And it's also real nice to look at. Other ways that this stuff can be used is steel tubing for your projects, whether it be railings or a swing set or a roll cage or something like that. And these are a couple examples of what they call DOM steel tubing. And this is made by taking cold roll bar, bending it into a tube, electron beam welding it, or some kind of beam, and, uh, and then running it through a machine that cleans up the inside with a mandrel. They call it drawing over a mandrel. It's a DOM tubing drawn over a mandrel. And this has all these different products have different ASE designations, but the alloys, I think, still follow along the same trend of 1010, 1018, 1020. And this stuff is really good. It bends great. You don't have to, if you, some people still use a welded steel tube. I haven't been able to find much of it lately, uh, which would be, it would look just like this, <clears throat> but it would have a, a blue line running lengthwise. I've got an example of that on file I'll show you. And that material 
is the only di real difference is obviously the, is there a, a, a seam that's visible to your eye as well as to the stress. And when you're constructing something like a roll cage using welded steel tube, you want to make sure that you put your seams inside of the structure, inside of the bends, so that you don't have them splitting if they get bent towards the outside. And uh, I like to use this stuff for bushing stock, which I'll see if I can grab a piece of that. This is what I, what I like to get for a lot of my construction projects is hollow bar or heavy bushing. They might call it bushing stock in some of the suppliers, but here's what the, the, the end looks like. It's just a super heavy wall, clean on the inside, usually fits a bolt perfectly, and you can use this for bosses and things like that in your construction projects. It's really you know a lot better than using a piece of pipe or stacking up washers. In fact, on my machines, a lot of the, uh, the thick washers I use on repetitive processes are made with slices of that material. The next thing that we use in the shop is 4130 chromoly tubing. There's a couple of examples here. And this stuff is, uh, again, the numbers mean something significant. I don't know what it is. Uh, you can look the stuff up. The, um, what I like to use it for mostly is bicycle frames and other high stress, lightweight structures. You can use it for a race car chassis and things like that, but you're gonna, you need to have some knowledge behind you before you attempt to do that. This material can't be welded with uh, you know, the everyday MIG welder. People do it, but the, uh, you have to use argon, pure argon as a shielding gas, and you have to make sure that you ignore any advice regarding stress relieving or any post-weld type heating processes with this material. Standard uh, E70S2 uh, on, your, on the clean material. You wanna make sure you get it clean. You don't wanna scratch it. Uh, radially around the tubing, your, your sanding should all go lengthwise. Your bending should, if you have the power to bend this stuff, the horsepower to bend it, you probably already know what the limitations are uh, of that. Uh, you know, it's, there's three different conditions available for most of the tube and sheet products. The softest would be annealed, and that bends uh, pretty easily. It's probably a little tougher than mild steel to bend, and you're able to get a good radius out of it without any, any failure, cracks, any stuff like that showing up on the, on the outside of the bend. The second is normalized. It's a pretty durable material, uh, somewhat challenging to work with. And uh, although you can bend it, you can bend it in the tube bender, and you can bend it uh, in your press breaker or whatever. It takes a significant amount of power to do so. And there's a possibility with tight radiuses and, and things like that, it's possible to have failures. In your tube bender, it can pull out of the, out of the clamps and wrinkle and things like that. We do a lot of chromoly tube bending here and uh, it never works right on the first try. <laughs> uh, I think I covered everything with this. And I'm sure I'll think of more things. Tonight.